Well, we're only a few weeks away from the beginning of the NBA season, so you know us here at We Miss the Exit are here to break down the top 25 shooting guards of the NBA for fantasy basketball. Grab your pad and pencil, turn on that GPS because we just missed the exit. Like with the point guards or any other position, my main criteria for being able to break down a fancy player is pretty much their number option on the team, their injury history, and their position availability. Now there are a lot of other factors, but these are my big three. S tier. The only guy in S tier right now is SGA. He's been drafting around 5th right now and he's a top pick for me, so I'm going to pick him almost no matter what, depending on where I go in the draft. Now he does everything at the elite level, his team is going to be competing this year and he's a point guard and a shooting guard. Problem is Chet is healthy and he's been a little bit more hurt more recently. That being said, go get him whenever you can. A plus tier. The only one in A plus tier for me is Anthony Edwards. He's been getting selected around 10th and I would go get him in the late 1st, early 2nd. He's the main guy in Minnesota, so he's definitely going to be putting up a lot of stuff. His team is going to be competing this year, plus he's available to play point guard and shooting guard. Problem is, Cat's going to be taking some shots from him, but if he's traded, expect him to go off. And plus, Anthony Edwards, he's capped where he is with the stats right about now. A tier. In my A tier is Donovan Mitchell, who's been selected around the 16th, right in the middle of the second, I'd say. So I'd go get him around that time. Pros are that he gives great overall stats, they're pretty reliable, and he's point guard and shooting guard. Problem is, he hasn't played more than 70 plus games since 2019, and his other teammates really need the ball to be helpful. A minus tier. This one's going to get a little long, so just be ready. To start off, we have Jordan Poole, who's been averaging around 48th getting selected, but I'd go get him in the second or third round because I think he'll be worth it. He's going to be the go-to guy in Washington. He plays point guard and shooting guard, and he's undervalued in almost all the drafts. The problem is that he's never been tested in this kind of scenario where he's the go-to guy. Next is Curry, who's been getting selected around 17th. See, I'd go get him in the late second, early third, but that's mainly because Clay is back, Chris Paul is going to be joining them, and he hasn't played 70 plus games since 2017, but he still puts up great stats. He's a point guard, shooting guard, and Poole is gone, which actually helps Curry. Now we have Devin Booker, who's been getting selected around 15. See, I take him in the middle of the second to middle of the third. He continues to be productive, he can go off on big nights, and his stats are pretty reliable. Then why do I have him this far? Because the majority of his teammates also need the ball to be helpful, and he hasn't played 70 plus games in a few years. Continued at a minus I have Jalen Brown. I'm a big fan of his and he's been getting selected around 26th and I'd probably go get him in the third round also. He continues to be productive, his stats are reliable each night and he plays shooting guard small forward. The problem is that he's still the number two guy in Boston and he hasn't played more than 70 plus games in a few years. Next is Mikael Bridges who's been getting selected around 26th also. See I'd go get him in the third round as well. He plays shooting guard small forward, there's not a lot of competition for him with the ball other than like Dinwiddie and he's quite healthy and reliable. The problem is that his stats are really capped and he rarely goes off for a crazy good game. He also doesn't provide much outside of points and threes, maybe a couple rebounds here and there. We also have Lamella Ball, who I'd normally be a big fan of fantasy, but the problem is he's coming off a major injury. But some of the good things are that he's the go-to guy in Charlotte, he has a green light to do whatever he wants, and he goes for a point guard shooting guard. He's been averaging getting selected around 10th, but I'd only get him in the late second, early third, unfortunately because of that injury. That means he's likely not going to be there when I go to get him. Again, continue with the A- tier, I have Zach Levine, who's been getting selected around 39th. I'd go and get him in the 4th round right there. He's relatively healthy, uh, he's the go-to guy even more so now in Chicago, his stats are reliable, he does hit a bunch of categories, and he plays shooting guard small forward. Problem is he doesn't really have a desire to win or get better, and you're rarely going to see him go off for crazy good games. And now we have Tyrese Halliburton. He's been getting selected around 8th in the drafts, but I'd only go get him in the 3rd round mainly because he's made of glass. Matherin may take a couple shots from him as well, but the good things are that he fills up the stats and he plays point guard shooting guard. Now we have Kyrie Irving. He's been getting selected around 28th, and I'd go get him right there in the third round as well. He fills up the stats, he's a point guard shooting guard, he can have crazy good games, and he really only competes with Doncic. Problem is, he hasn't played 70 plus games since 2017, and also, Kyrie's gonna Kyrie at some point in the season, you know that. And to finish off this A-minus tier, I have DeJounte Murray, who's been getting selected around 21st. I'd go and get him in the early third round. The good things about Murray is that his stats are reliable, he's finally healthy, and he plays point guard shooting guard. Problem is, he's not really going to have any crazy good stat games, and he's going to be competing with Trey, who almost always has the ball whenever they're on the court. Now for that B-plus tier. Another long group of grading, we're going to start off with Kawhi Leonard, who's been getting selected around 46th, and I'd go get him maybe in the fourth round. He gives good stats across the board, he's a reliable stat guy, he's a shooting guard small forward. The problem is that he will not play a full season, and that's why I almost always avoid him no matter what. Next to him is his buddy Paul George, who's been getting selected around 32nd. Now, he also puts good stats across the board, reliable stats, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, which is great. Problem is, like Kawhi, he'll never play a full season. Again, another guy I almost always avoid. 
Also in B+, plus is James Harden, who's been getting selected around 25th, but I would only go get him in the 4th round or so. He fills up the stats across the board, he plays point guard, shooting guard, but he hasn't played 70 plus games since the 2019 season, and he is always looking to get traded. Which to me says he's a head case, and it's going to be a headache to see if he's going to be reliable on where he goes if he's traded. Continuing B+, plus is Desmond Bain. He's been getting picked around 35th. See, and I'd go get him in the 4th, 5th round, mainly because he took a big step last year, but who knows if this is going to be just like a fluke or a flash in the pan, or if this is actually for real. Now, he should be able to start strong with Moran out for a while, plus he's a shooting guard small forward. Then we have Cade Cunningham, who's been getting selected around 36th, which is pretty good for the beginning of the fourth round, where I would probably go and get him as well. He fills up the stats across the board, he has a green light to do what he wants where he is, and he plays point guard shooting guard. My question is that he has to share the ball with Ivy, and can he actually sustain this production that he's been putting up since last year? And now we have Drew Holiday, and I really gotta think this out a little bit better, but I wanna get this video out. He's been getting selected around 50th, I'd still go and get him maybe at the fourth round, Stats are pretty reliable, he plays point guard, shooting guard, and I think he has a better chance of better point guard stats with Aiden and Simons than he did when he was in Milwaukee. Problem is he doesn't really play more than 70 plus games and he's never going to have any real crazy stat nights. Then we have Jamal Murray who's been getting selected around 42nd, see and I'd go grab him in the 4th round as well. He's a pretty reliable stat guy, he's the number 2 guy in Denver which is a good thing and they're a fast paced team. He plays point guard, shooting guard. Problem is that he's pretty injury prone other than like last year and his stats are likely capped at where they are. And to finish off the B-plus tier, we have Josh Giddy. He's been getting selected around 88th, but I'd start looking at him around the 4th or 5th round, just because a lot of people don't think about him. He is slotted for 4 different positions, point guard, shooting guard, small forward, and power forward. He has great all-around stats. Problem is that he's now the number 3 guy on the team, and Chet and SGA are healthy, and that's going to hurt his overall stats. And B-tier. To start off B tier, I have Bradley Beal. He's been getting selected around 51st. I'd probably go get him in the later part of the 5th round. He's going to be playing on a pretty fast paced team. He plays point guard, shooting guard. The problem is that he hasn't played 70 plus games since 2019. He's likely moved to the number 3 guy in Phoenix. And I disagree with his stat projection of 23-4-5. Also in B tier, I have Brandon Ingram. He's been getting selected around 46th and I'd go get him in the 5th 6th round. A big reason for that is because he's going to take a hit when Williamson is playing. That's going to hurt his production if Williamson is playing. He's also never healthy and hasn't played 70 plus games since his rookie year. The good thing is that he does hit a bunch of different stats. He's generally reliable with his stats and he plays shooting guard, small forward, and power forward. And to finish off B tier, I have DeRozan, who's relatively healthy. He hits a lot of different categories. He plays shooting guard, small forward. The problem is that he's not going to hit threes at a shooting guard. And I don't think he's going to put up the production that he did last year. And I don't agree with his projection of 24, 5, and 5. B minus tier, where I was in school. Only one guy here and is Jalen Green, who's been getting selected around 70th. And I'd probably go get him in the 6th round. The good thing is that he's a solid overall pick. He gets point guard, shooting guard, and he does hit a bunch of different stats. The problem is that Van Vliet is likely going to be taking a lot of different touches from him. And I disagree with some of his stat projections of 22, 4, and 3. And again, here are my honorable mentions. These are guys that you want to pay attention to from round six on. We have Maxi, Simons, Hero, McCollum, Clarkson, Franz Wagner, Barrett, Rogier, Dinwiddie, Ivy, Russell, and Vassal. Now, there are a bunch more guys that you can pay attention to, but those are like bigger names I want you to pay attention to towards the end of your draft. So that is it. What do you think about the list so far? Look out for that small forward video that should be coming out relatively soon, and then let me know how your drafts have been going. Hope you found this to be a little bit more useful than my point guard list that did not include Damian Lillard. Then don't forget to plug in that GPS as we miss the exit.